Hi and welcome. It is Ruth here at Artful Stampin'. I hope you've had a good Saturday. And I am going to be playing with Rare Blessings, this stamp set here. I it, I had another of those kind of just drifting off to sleep moments a couple of nights ago and the colour scheme for this came into my head. And I just, I thought, yes, bright and zingy, nice and summery and or springy. And um, I just had to try it out. So I've, you know, not really done lots in the craft room today. I, I just had a bit of a potter before tea time. So I have done some bit, a bit of playing, but thought I'd come on and finish off with you guys. I've done some fussy cutting, which is kind of the boring bit, really. I've also got some other stamp sets out. But before I get onto this, I just want to show you what I did when I had the idea in my head and I was trying to figure out how the dimensions would work. So I knew I wanted to use that bl beautiful blossom stamp. So I've had this notebook for ages and ages now. And the reason I purchased it, it was super cheap, really cheap. I think it was like a pound or two from Lidl or something. Uh, the paper is quite thin. It's not expensive paper. It's quite thin. But it's got the grids on it. So what I did was I cut myself a card matting layer so this is five millimeters or half a centimeter smaller than my card base so if you use half a you know letter size in the states or half a uh, a4 in the uk and australia basically you cut your layer a little bit smaller than your matting layer now some people prefer a bigger border and some people like a thinner border or a thin border, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But what I recommend you do is if you've got an idea for a card in your head and you want to sketch it out, first of all, you then get your standard matting layer. So I know what I'm going to write on here, A6 matting layer. And I won't throw this out. I'll just have it in my box so I know that this is the size. And I very quickly just uh, put it on my piece of my grid paper here and just drew a few lines down the side like that so that I ended up with is that right oh no that's not it oh yes it is yeah it is that that is correct right so it went to there oh sorry I got stumped by that extra line that I've done there Okay, so I knew I wanted to use the orchid stamp, so I just quickly then stamped the orchid onto that matting layer because I'm using actual sizes here. And then I wanted to see what the this would look like on my card. So I got the die, and I don't know if you can see, but I drew around my die to end up with that shape. So I had a kind of idea of how it would look on the page. So... Anyway, this is just a little tip. If you're into card sketching, the design before you have a play, then this is a, a handy kind of way of doing it so that you can, you know, put your stamp on, draw some stuff around it and figure out where you're going. Anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. Some of you might find that, that helpful. Uh, some may not. But uh, yeah, that was my process. Okay. Oh, I've got a die out. That's meant to be away. But yeah. So, I'm using Rare Blessings. I'm using the dies from Jubilee's Beauty. Jubilee Beauty. And there's a stamp set that goes with this. It's called Birthday Jubilee. And I was drawn to it because of this beautiful lace. I love this. Look, it cuts so, so beautifully. And it can be kind of dainty if you cut it with a pale colour and then festive if you cut it with a nice bright colour. So that's what I kind of like about it. Right, so as I said, a couple of nights ago, as I was drifting off to sleep, I had this kind of colour scheme in my head and I had Bermuda, Bermuda Bay or Coastal Cabana as a background colour and it had yellow and orange. And I thought about this stamp and I thought instead of just stamping it onto white card and colouring it all in and blah, 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 what if we stamped it with a dark red onto the yellow and then used our fantastic blend pen, blender pen, not blend pen, blender, to colour it in? 
so I did and then I fussy cut it which I did off screen so I want to show you this because the results are just so lovely you get this kind of like ready orangey effect I mean I didn't I didn't blend every single thing but basically I didn't have to add any other color I used the residual cherry cobbler there with the blender pen and that was quite enough to kind of get enough color on there so I'm just going to do a little bit more colouring or blending as it were to show you that if you wanted to you know make it darker you could do if you wanted to so you could push activate the colour and push it around even more than I've done okay so you can really play with that and it doesn't take much effort to do that at all just kind of act reactivating as I said all right so that's what I did so in my head as I fell asleep I had the blue in my mind and then I had a strip of lacy orange which is this and then this lovely orchid now in my head it probably did look a little bit different but it kind of works I, I'm really pleased with how it's kind of turned out so that's going to go somewhere there. I might just have to play with the placement there because I've then stamped one of those gorgeous sentiments from that set. A true friend is the rest of all blessings. And then I stamped, so I stamped that in Cherry Cobbler and then I stamped it onto a scrap of, this is Pineapple Punch. So if you're watching this in the future and you want to have a go doing this technique, Pineapple Punch is not going to be available past the 2nd of June so maybe use Daffodil Delight so I stamped it onto a piece of yellow and then I have cut out the word friend which I'm then going to stick over the top like that and I wanted to highlight the word rarest and blessing so I've cut blessings out now do I want to have rarest of or do I want just rarest what do you think should it just be rarest or rarest of and then I am thinking of stamping in the background of my, just putting something on the blue because to me it looks a bit clean at the moment. It needs something else. Anyway, I'm going to play with these bits in a second. Don't you worry. So let me say a quick hello to everybody and get your feelings on what you think I should do. So do you think I should stamp something in the blue? Because, it, yeah, it just looks a little bit clean for me. You know, not very Ruth just yet. So, hello Kay and Deborah and Anna, Amory, Connie, Subo, Deborah, Helen, Denise, Sheila, Carol, Janice, Martina. Hello, good evening, I'm late because I had to finish an argument first. Okay, Martina, I hope it was important. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. Keep thinking up, hello. Uh, what about dry embossing the blue? Stamp tone on tone. Yeah, I was thinking tone on tone. And just, oh, I forgot. We've got this texture. In my head, I was thinking I need a texture and I was gonna go to label me bold because that's got that lovely texture in it. Forgetting Rare Blessings does have this. Right, so I'm gonna grab a Coastal Cabana because I want tone on tone. I don't want anything too in your face, you know. Don't know why I've gone Northern, but there we go. Right, move that over. Move over, darling. Now I've already managed to get a little thing on there. Okay, let's scoot out a bit. Well, what has everybody been up to today? Or what is are people up to today? Because in America, it's just the afternoon. So we've already had our tea. We did a slow cooker tea tonight because I, thought I got it all prepped this afternoon because I thought I don't want to, come evening, have to think about food. Because I know that I'm going to be a little bit weary and I can't be doing with being in the kitchen for hours. 
so I just did my sausage casserole that all the kids are quite happy to eat. It's got a tin of tomatoes, pepper, chopped up carrots and onion, and then I put paprika in it, salt, pepper, a sausages, a can of butter beans. Uh, what else goes in it? Some mixed herbs. And that's pretty much it. And it just goes in the slow cooker all day. It's fabulous. That's better, isn't it? It's made a kind of vignette effect around it. So vignette is where you have it dark around the edges and it comes close in. Right, now, the big question is, do I glue it with dimensionals or do I just glue it flat? Because that would be so much easier. Oh dear, Martina. I wouldn't even have bothered. <laughs> and Chalice, I like it. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to go with the glue and put the glue in the parts that are, you know, got a lot of space. Because when you push down with this glue, it does splay out, it does blodge out. So you only need a tiny, tiny amount. Right. Oh, now I need to check the placement of the flower. So if I put the flower there, I need to make sure it misses. So if that goes there, that is probably the best place for that. Raise the flowers, do you think? Did you hear that in a squeal? Okay. Let's do it. Because Connie said so. Hi, Esther. Oh, that sounds lovely, Janice. I did buy some red wine yesterday. I've not bought wine for ages, so. But I'm terrible at kind of keeping stuff like that and going, oh, I'll keep it for special. And then not get around to drinking it. The only thing is, I'm really the only drinker of wine in the house. So I'd have to finish the bottle over three nights or so. I'm not a big big drinker. So. I suppose I could share it with the neighbours, couldn't I? I could go, I've started a bottle of wine. Do you want some? Or I could stick it in my dinner, couldn't I? We could do a beef stew or something. Well done, Martina. I'm sure you kept your cool. Or maybe you didn't. Oh, Deborah, I, basically it's what I just said, really. Two packets of sausages. But what, what the kids love is that the sausages, I mean, I did sort of fry them off a little bit to make the skins go a bit harder, but actually I think they really like it because the skin goes soft and it makes it, re it's like proper comfort food because it's all squishy and soft. So um, now what I really want is uh, 
I think Bermuda Bay under here. Let me see if I can grab it. Grab my Bermuda Bay. Oh no, that's coastal. Oh no. Let's see, do I have any Bermuda Bay? Oh, 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 oh. <gasps> Two sheets left. What? What? Shocker. I keep saying that word, I need to stop it. Every day is special, you can get a wine stopper. <laughs> I like it. I'll just push up the cork back in. Why don't I do that? You cook them crispy in the south. Well, normally, if we're having a sausage meal, like sausages and Yorkshire pudding, then yeah, we cook them or roast. I stick stick them in the oven to be honest, so you don't have to look after it. But um, but when you do it as a ca in a casserole, they just go all really soft and yummy. Now it used to be that I have to, I'd then have to fish all the sausages out, blend the vegetables, so that the kids would even dare to <laughs> eat them. Uh, but now I can get away with just cutting the vegetables small and they're happy with that. So, we have ways and means, as my father says. We have ways and means. Right, so I haven't forgotten, haven't forgotten, I've got my special thing here. Now, you guys are supposed to be helping me. Do I want rarest of in yellow you see aesthetically I'm looking at that and I go I want that whole thing in yellow but I don't really want the word of in yellow because it doesn't really make sense to have it in yellow so I'm a bit stuck what do you think what would you do guys so if you're watching this on the replay you can still let me know but obviously it won't make any difference because you can't go back in time just so you know. Oops. I'm just using up all my little, all my little little pieces here. Put that there. Come on, off my finger. There we go. Right, have I got other, any other dimensionals? I'm sure I had some. Leave it. Oh, Subo, isn't it funny? She's so rude, isn't she? Although she did a very good job that I actually have started to get a bit scared that she's going to start taking over my One Sheet Wonders because she did it so fast. I'm like, oh, mm, I need to stop faffing around and get on with it. So one person says, oh, leave it. And two of you are saying rare oh no few of you are saying just the rarest okay i'm gonna wait a little bit longer for some comments to come through sometimes it takes a little bit of time while i just add a couple more pieces to my thing here Right, I think I've got all the bits off the back now. So now I just need to line this up with what I stamped already. Sorry, my head had to get in the way then because I needed to see what I was doing. There's a little bit of dimensional showing, so I'm just shoving it under with my scissors. Okay, so how many how many votes for rarest? One, two, three. Oh, it's a it's a tie. Now, the only thing is that when I stamped it, the of is quite. It's like I pushed a little bit extra. It looks very thick. 
So I'm wondering whether to cut it. It's because I don't like the way I've stamped it. <laughs> oh, another one for rarest of. Hi, Wanda. Hello. Um, we're having a bit of a debate. Do I cut the of off? See, really, oh, I wonder if I should do A. Just, I'm trying to see if I can find the scrap that I cut it off. No, I don't know where it is. Yeah, but technically, yeah. Mm. Anyway, I'm thinking I'll be happier if I stamp the A as well so it looks like a pattern. So this is such a simple technique, just to stamp your sentiment onto a, a different colour cardstock and then cut it apart and stick it over the stick it over the pre-stamped one. It just highlights. I think I have seen it before. It's not I don't think it's unique to me. I've not I've not invented this. I'm sure I have seen it done. But I've never tried it. Ah, uh, so yeah, some of you are, are torn between cutting it and leaving it. It's just easier to put it down, put the glue first because it's such a small piece. <laughs> right, well, thank you everybody for your opinion. Sorry if I didn't go with your one. But when you do it, you can do what you'd like. Right, so that one's done. I'm going to pop that aside now. So the, I cut some more pieces. Oh, ooh, I'm quite excited to show you this. Right, so then I made a flower using the the perennial flower punch. I call it the perennial flower punch. I don't know if that's the word for it. But looky here. Look at the detail on this flower. Let me see if I can get the lighting good. Can you see? I've put like veining. And the way I did it was with somewhere here where do I put it ta -da! the tree from nature's beauty okay so I did it in Bermuda Bay I'll just show you what that image looks like I didn't actually ink all of it I just inked the top of it like that and then went round the flower petal like that. You know. You know. Technical noise that is. So that's the way I just added extra texture to this. I just fancied doing it. And this has got one, two, three, four layers of those flowers. And I've tweezered them and I've curled them to make that and I've got this lovely which I think I might colour in yellow it's a, it's a retired pearl this it was around a while ago and I've just gotten loads of them you know what I need a darker colour oh I'll use Mango Melody because I've got that one um. yeah that's so true Bear. yeah Oh, I wonder if I can hold this with my scissors. Oh, yeah. That's easier.
Okay. Nice. Okay, so I've done the flower. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I've got this cut out, which might be nice. I've also got one of the... This is retired doilies. This is in the clearance rack at the moment. Oh, I wonder what that would look like if I stuck it down and then cut it to the size of the actual label. That might look nice. And then I could put that on a turquoise... Maybe a turquoise background or maybe a green background. I thought I cut a green ready. Maybe not. But I do have some of these lovely green leaves cut out, so I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put glue in the centre because the flower's going to sit on it, so that's going to get covered up. And then I'm just going to take a moment to make sure that that's aligned symmetrically. Not quite, it needs to go up a bit. I'm looking up and down and side to side. Da, 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 da. There we go, right. Just make sure that's kind of stuck. And I did have my scissors, here they are. Oh dear, Cindy. Oh, yeah, I sometimes get flower, uh, birds, not flowers, flying into my conservatory. And then we just leave them there and then like marvel at the flies and the maggots. Maggots. Anyone know the reference to the film? Um, yeah, because it fascinates us to see it like decay over a few, <laughs> over a week or two. I know that's disgusting, but it is fascinating. Even decay has beauty, doesn't it? What's the name of that artist? Some artists leave stuff, don't they, and watch things decay? Oh no, there was a, an artist who painted decay, didn't he? Like he'd leave. You know that artist that did kind of all those still lifes with all the fruit and the vegetables and stuff? I'm sure there's one that hasn't it got like a rotting apple or something in it to signify something. Oh, you gave him a pro good for you, Cindy. Right, there we go. This is quite simple, really. So it's all about having a, fo a main focal point. If you're ever stuck about for making a card, just think focal point, focal point, focal point. You know, that's that's what you're aiming for. So let me get some dimensionals. I've gone up Australian now. Yeah, so does anyone understand my reference to maggots? It's in a film that I love that I've told you guys about before. One of my favourite films. It's a New Zealand film. Esther might get it, although Esther didn't think it was as funny as I thought it was. Is there a sailing ship? Mm, not that I remember. Oh, what's... Is there one in Sailing Home? There might be one in... There's a sail... Ah, there's a sailing boat. It's not a sailing ship. Call of the Wilder People. Hunt for the Wilder People. See, she just, I can't even call it by its proper name. Yes, you're correct, Esther. Right, so you can have focal point, slap bang in the middle, like that, and have an equal amount of spacing all the way around. Or you can turn it portrait and have your focal point at that point there. It's kind of up to you, really, what you fancy. I think I might do it this way, actually. Okay. You've seen it once, Cindy. Oh. I think we've watched it about 10 times in our house. Okay. 
Oh, someone will have to explain. What's the difference between a boat and a ship? I guess it might be the size. The length? Length. It might be the length. So these little leaves are in that Jubilee die set. There we go, Deborah knows. I knew somebody would know. You guys are a wealth of information. Ships ahoy. Okay, just putting a spot of glue there because I'm going to stick my flower on. Hi, Gina. Oh, I did know that, Christine. Hello, Christine. I've sent your trimmer to you, so you might get it Monday, Tuesday. Right, and there's my pearl to go in the middle. Now, what colour base? Shall we go for yellow? Yellow. There we go. Nice and bright and zingy. So, Got one more to do. So I did have an idea. It isn't fully executed yet. Oh, maybe that, oh no, I think that's the base, not that one. I've got this piece of lace cut out, and I thought to do a similar technique to how I did the bigger orchid, but maybe to cut a few out of these and see what we can create because I figured these would be a bit easier to cut out. So. Yeah, and I wanted to try doing it, the cherry cobbler on the, this is Mango Melody and seeing the difference between this and the Uh, pineapple punch. So you get your blend, blender, pen, blender, I must remember to say that. And then you just reactivate the ink and spread it around. I don't know if I'm going to use the leaves, but I'll do them anyway. While I'm here, may as well. <laughs> I did that as well, Wendy. I had some post-it tabs and I was like, oh, I've got to the end of my colour. Because I, I think I chose to use one specific, one colour. And I was like, oh, oops, I'm going to have to start another colour. <laughs> So, uh, Wendy was just saying that she's got her catalogue, for those of you who are watching the replay. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Beth. It's very dramatic, isn't it? Well, with the yellow and the blue as well, it's very dramatic. This is so much easier to cut out than the orchid. Oh my word. You have to do kind of finger gymnastics with the orchid. If you like fussy cutting, you'll love cutting the, fuss <laughs> the orchid out. Right. Oh, got to go in here now. Oh. Okay. Do 
Yeah, I have thought of putting, doing a row of three and then adding maybe a little bit more texture with some ribbons or something behind the flower, flowers. Because I like playing with multiples of things to create order, but then juxtaposing it with maybe something slightly more chaotic. So like having, you know, like I said, a row of three and then having a bit more of a crazy background so that, you know, you've got that contrast of things going on. And it's kind of, I was thinking about how art and music are so kind of like, obviously they're both creative, but music has a rhythm to it and so does art and you know card making included um, oh Gina you hadn't realized oh you didn't realize that Janice had a channel well obviously I'd not done a very good job of promoting it then had I Hi Bobby, how you doing? Yes, this was very much inspired by the colours of India, Martina, yes. Very much so. Yeah, actually I had in my head, I think I also wanted a bit of pink, but I think the stamping of the cherry cobbler onto a lighter colour and blending it in almost gives it a pinky hue. So, um... So for those of you who haven't caught the video yet, yesterday was the inaugural video hop of the Stamp Around UK group. So we're all demonstrators within the UK and we all did a video that got released at six o'clock yesterday. So you would have been like bing pinging away. Thank you, Bobby. You're too kind. Right, so as I said, I like the idea of having the three there, and that's my kind of, you know, focal point. I've also got some of these leaves left, which I'd really like to use. But I like the idea of just putting some texture and stuff in the background. So I've got some Daffodil Delight, and I've got a very little bit of this Pineapple Punch ribbon. And I've probably got... oh. Look, a little bit of this, this is Grapefruit Grove thread. So, I don't know. Find some kind of way of making it look crazy in the background. I might take some of this apart. I don't know how much am I going to need? One, two, and a bit for a bow. One, two, and a bit for a bow. That's pretty much all of it, actually. Right, so to take apart thread, you need to find, see where it's spun together and then spin it in the opposite direction to get it to start pulling apart. So this one, I can see, it's got three strands. Now, I usually do something a bit naughty. I have one strand in my mouth and I hold the other two strands. So I'm going to stick that in my mouth. And can you see, I'm pulling it apart, and then I'm going to hold it here, let go, put this bit in my mouth again, pull this apart, oops, spinning back on itself, and I'm unravelling it as well, letting it unravel. You can let this kind of... This is nearly all unravelled, really. I can spin some of it. But it's important when you do this, you've got to keep it taut because otherwise it just wants to ravel back up on itself. See, like it's already kind of done it a bit. But anyway, I've done I've done the bulk of the work. So 
Take this one off. There we go. That's one. Actually, this can be split again th into three. Wow, we. So the thick baker's twine is quite good value for money for this because you can split it so many times. <clears throat> You've already copied two ideas from the blog hop. Well done, Martina. Good work. There were some fab ideas, weren't there? I liked Ema's, um the way she did her card with the fold, where she just chopped a bit off and then just swiveled it round. I love that. Okay, so this is a case again of, I know it It might look like I know what I'm doing. I really don't. I'm just experimenting and going, hmm, let's see what I can do here. I like the idea of there being kind of a frou frou bit at the side. And then I've got all this stuff going on. I don't think that's going to work, actually. So let's have a look. Let me stick that on top. One, two, three. And then maybe we could have a leaf coming out of each one of them. But like at a different point. Or maybe at the same point, I don't know. Let's have a think. Hmm, no, I don't like that. Or I could go for clustering them. Might cut some flowers off, uh, leaves off at this rate though. And having them all come from a central focal point. You know what, I think I prefer that, you know. That was me going on about, oh, let's have them in a row. Didn't work. Oh, and you copied mine as well, Martina. Awesome. No, these are not from the Sprig Punch. They're from the Jubilee Beauty. You get two leaf dies. They are ever so slightly different. One's got pointy leaves and one's got round leaves. And it was great because I just cut them both together and I, I just cut a whole load of leaves out in one go. Yeah, I was sad this one was retiring because I didn't play with it as much as I had hoped. Right, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to cut the flower off, or the leaf off first. I'm going to cut the leaf off. And I'm going to use the leaf separately. Martina thinks I should move the loops to the middle more. I might move it just sort of to there. I, I actually quite like it being off centre because it, I think it shows the lace off quite nicely, doesn't it? Okay, so let's try and wiggle this round. Yeah, that's it. That's what I want. I'm going to trim some of these. Now you can split these even further if you want to. Make it really kind of quite spinning. Come on. Make it quite frou frou. I 
think I need to do some double knots because the the knots are just slipping out as I'm holding them. So I'm going to double knot all these loops and then because you don't want to send it to somebody and then then pull something and it will unravel on them. That wouldn't be nice. So let's pull that. Okay. There we go. There we go. Get in there. Right. So kind of arrange it how you like and then I'm going to get the dimensionals and stick this. Hi Pamela, lovely to see you, you love being part of the live, good. Now I know loads of you, not loads of you, but a few of you have been putting on the comments or on Artful Stamping Space, the chat's not appearing, I know, and unfortunately there is pretty much, well there is nothing I can do about it, it's kind of in YouTube's hands. All I can put it down to is, you know what, the C word and loads of people being on YouTube and lots of people uploading. Uh, however, I did look back on some of my videos and um, the one the one where I celebrate the 6,000 subscribers, I, I do believe the chat has appeared for that one. So it's a case of just like holding on and waiting. And eventually it shows up. So. so I'm afraid patience is a virtue. And I, so as a result, I am trying to read out some, you know, if the comments are significant or asking me something, I try and read them out so that it makes sense if you can't read the chat. Stick a glue dot on it, they won't move those knots. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. So you could either stick a glue dot on it or just or double knot it, as I've done. Right, so these, these are quite 3D. But I want to stick some of these leaves coming out like that. A couple there, maybe a couple there. One there, rather. I haven't got, <laughs> I haven't got a couple. Got that one to go there. Under. Right now, I've got to get it all stuck in. <laughs> That's the only thing. You might arrange it nicely, and then you're like, mm, "Got to glue it, glue it down now." I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the tip there, popping it under there. Let's get my. My scissors or you can get your pick tool or whatever you've got just to kind of get in there and push it down so it sticks firmly. Pop some glue on these ones and again just pop it under, stick down. Oh are you Gina? Oh cool. What colours did you use? Gina's saying that she's trying to channel my inner shabby chic to do a vintage style card. Yeah, Pamela, the issue is not right now. It's when the this video is finished. So Pamela's saying, I can see the comments right now. Yeah, in the chat, you can see the comments. But for those who aren't able to catch me on the replay, you're, you're able to click the chat button and see what everyone was talking about. But it's taking a few days for those words to show up, which is really annoying for people who can't make my lives. Because I have a lot of people who'd watch me, you know, a few hours later or, oh gosh, even days and months later, years later. <laughs> so um, the lives, that is. Obviously, not every video I do is a live video. Sometimes I shoot videos and then upload them, up, upload them. Oh, my words. Uh and a lot of my earlier videos are like that because YouTube didn't have the live function. It's just been in the last nine months or so that I've been doing more lives because you guys seem to enjoy them. So there we go. Oh, I like that one. Now, do I keep it simple by putting it on a yellow or 
do I zing it up by putting it on a green? I'm thinking the green. It needs some bling though, doesn't it? Hello, Margaret, Margaret. Welcome. So it's the first time you've managed to catch me on the live. You are very welcome. Please, everybody, welcome Margaret to her first live. Oh, I just, I just found one of my lip balms. Look at that. Mango. Oh, it's lush. And I'm actually really pleased I can smell it because my sense of smell has been very slow in returning to me. And I, I still don't think I'm tasting everything quite properly yet. So. Oh, I've got some... I want some tiny ones. They don't seem delicate enough. I need something really delicate. Looking for some embellishments, everybody. Sorry, bear with. Um, oh, these ones. Where are you from, Margaret? So, do I want to go tone on tone? So yellow on yellow. Actually, I think I do because I don't actually want to detract that much from this focal point. And I think if I put orange here, your eye will get drawn too much to it. So I'm going to go with the yellow. You're from Kent, Margaret. Well, I never. That's where my father um, uh, was born. And actually, he has a sister called Margaret, which is quite ironic. There we go. Auntie Margaret. I'm going to have to call you Auntie Margaret from now on. So my father was born Rain and Margaret. Oh, sister-in-law, yes, yeah, sorry, but she's still Auntie Margaret, isn't she? Yeah, sorry, my dad's sister-in-law, not sister. Thank you, Esther. That's my, that's my sister reminding me of my family. Hmm. Yes, they... Uh... Farage is from Kent, oh dear. Oh yeah, no, I knew that. Yeah, I think I knew that. I think some of my relations voted for him. Oh, oh so you're not my auntie Margaret. There we go. <laughs> that would have been that would have been really quite bizarre if I'd realized that my one of my relations was watching. Uh very odd. Kent is in the south east of the UK, of England. So below London and then going off towards, well, towards France, to be honest. Obviously, we're not on the border with France because we're an island. But um, there's like the shortest distance between France and England. And so people will swim the channel. And there's a do there's a service a ferry service from Dover to Calais. So often when people go to France for a day, as I did when I was a teenager, you drive to Dover, you get on the ferry, and you go to Calais for like a day day trip. Oh, you met Farage's mother. Oh, let's see. Yes, I know Kent is really quite close to you, Kay. I'm thinking next time I go to visit my parents, you'll have to come over. Meet my mummy. Right, I think I'm done on that one. I've just got to stick this one now. Uh, 
What, you moved here to meet Farage's mother or you met, went there to be near France, Margaret? <laughs> Sorry. The thing, you probably have guessed from my channel I'm a bit cheeky. So please don't ever think I'm being rude. It's just me being a bit cheeky and taking advantage of misunderstandings that can occur in chat because I can't see your face. So. Right. Oh no, can't go to France now. Oh no. Oh no, no. I have to wait until all this business is over. Right, I'm just doing a little dab of glue there and I'm actually almost dabbing it back off with my finger because I only want the tiniest amount just to stick that leaf there. Oh, I could do Cheryl. I might have time this evening actually. There we go. This is my little trio of cards. Trio, trio. Sorry, that's... That takes me back to my childhood. It was an advert for a chocolate bar. If anyone's interested, they can look it up on YouTube. All those old adverts you can find somewhere on YouTube. So, as I was saying at the beginning, I went to sleep the other night. Yeah, so two nights ago, I fell asleep with the idea of this in my head. So, I finally got round to doing it. I then had another idea for another card... I think using this one, oh, sorry, you can't see this one, but in completely different colours. I'm not going to tell you because, you know, I don't want you to don't want to spoil it, but um, last night I had another idea. Not actually, not dissimilar to this shape, but in completely different colour way. So if I just quickly go over the techniques and the tools and everything used. So we've got a Bermuda Bay base with a Coastal Cabana matting layer, and this is Coastal Cabana as well. Cabana or Cabana, depending where you're from. This is Pineapple Punch Yellow. However, if that's not available anymore, then Daffodil Delight would be absolutely fine. Then I've used Mango Melody Oranges for the flowers and the lace here. This is a retiring doily that's still available in the clearance section. And then I use the Jubilee Beauty dies to cut the lace, this lace and the leaves. I used Rarest Blessings, Rare Blessings, sorry, which is this stamp set here. It's got this gorgeous orchid. This fabulous texture, which is what I use to go around the edge of this matting layer. And I used the flower here to stamp those flowers. And as you saw, I cut the leaves to just pop the leaves underneath. And this beautiful sentiment, a true friend is the rarest of all blessings. And I stamped it with cherry cobbler onto the yellow and then onto the blue and onto the mango melody. And then stamped it again onto the yellow, but then cut out the key, what I think was the key words and just made, highlighted that. And I, I think that just makes a really fun kind of focal point. So this flower was made using the, this flower punch. I'm gonna have to find a catalog to get the names. I do forget them, even though I should remember. I do forget these names. Perennial flower. Oh, I did get it right. I called it that earlier, didn't I? The perennial flower. And I used the texture from Nature's Beauty, which was on my desk. Here it is. This tree here from Nature's Beauty, I stamped that onto the petals to give it some texture. You don't have to do that. You can just sponge if you want. That's absolutely fine. But for me, it just adds, can you see the texture on there? It just adds some really lovely texture. 
Oh, I can bring this one in to show you how that's turned out as well. Isn't that lovely? And then you've got the orchid there. That's I use the blender on. It's just it's just kind of like, you know. And my Pikachu tonight, yes I am Subo. I've still got it on. I've hardly taken it off for the last few days. Because the weather's been quite cool. So um Who's that? Hi David, welcome. So this was the third card and again I cut cut those flowers out and then use the leaves in the background. There, alright. So that was quite a fun little trio. The flower petals look like butterfly wings. Oh, I'll kind of take that as a compliment I think. Oh no, there's more I want to buy. The flower essence pack. Oh, how have you lived without it, Beth? <laughs> this is the girl that as soon as flower punches come out, I'm like, yep, yep, no question. That's my thing. You had a frost this morning, Wendy. Oh, yeah, I don't think it was that cold here. Yeah, I don't think it was that cold, but... um. It, it was cooler, so I wore my, I, I sort of get, normally I get dressed, you know, normal clothes, you know, maybe with a jumper or whatever, and then I put my Pikachu outfit on, and then I go and sit in the garden and have my quiet time, and then, um, yeah, although I spent a lot of time out there for ages, because I, I ended up ringing a friend who I'd not spoken to for a while and having a long catch up with her, then having quiet time, then looking at some... Oh, my husband bought me the most beautiful set of um, comics. They were in, they're independent um, comic. I'll show them to you another time. But they are by a... I think she's... Ger yeah, she's German. She lives in the UK, but is... Um, I don't know if she's married yet, but she's with a Nigerian guy. And... There's one little book which is all about how when she first met his parents, which was absolutely fascinating. I absolutely love it. Um, so I will at some point I will share these comics with you. And then she writes comics about just really sort of interesting observations and things. And then sometimes her fans will write stuff into her. So she tends to do it on crowdfunding. So she'll say, oh, look, this is an idea of what I've got. Uh, can you crowdfund me and or kickstart or whatever? So. Yeah, so he saw it, I think, on Kickstarter and backed it. And I think if you paid extra, she would draw inside the book for you. So he's got her to do a little illustration saying happy birthday to me and she's drawn a cake, which is also really special. So um, anyway, hey, Donna, I'm just finishing. <laughs> but you know what? Let's do a Zoom. I'm going to set it up right now. So I will also pop the link in the WhatsApp group and Artful Stamping Space. And um, yeah, Esther, you know who I, yeah, you, you know who I think I should, I'm going to see if I can get another copy because I have a friend who's Nigerian and he married a British girl. And I just thought, oh my gosh, he's going to absolutely love this. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can get a copy for them. Right. Uh, any questions? Oh, there's supposed to be a ground frost tonight. Oh, Christine, I'm so glad you say that because I nearly planted out my tomatoes today. When I say nearly, I mean I thought about it. And then I didn't do anything. I went and had a walk. Can't do Zoom. You're still in your pyjamas. Oh, don't you worry, Donna. You and all the rest of Australia and New Zealand. Oh, don't you worry. Um... Donna, did you get my card? Oh, Donna's got a card from Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. So where are you from then, Cheryl? Hi, David, from the USA. Are you a crafter, David? Are you into crafting? Or paper crafts? Card making? Yeah, look, see, I am Pikachu. Look, I've got, you can see I've got the yellow. Oh, it, oh maybe this is why I've been thinking of yellow. Because I've been wearing yellow. <laughs> you love one and three one and three two might grow on you 
Actually, I haven't asked you. Yes, I was just heading to bed. I was just about to fall asleep when I saw Donna came on live and I thought, no, I can't start to watch Donna. I'd never get to sleep. <laughs> I'll be up till like three o'clock in the morning. So I'm really sorry, Donna, I missed you live. <laughs> ah, so two is Esther's fave. Okay, guys, let's do the vote. And while you're doing the vote, I will set up Zoom. How do you get Pikachu on a bus? Uh, you push him on. Push him, uh, poke him, oh, poke him on. <laughs> I'm a bit slow. You poke him on. Okay, Sue. Number three, but hard to pick. Yeah, I actually really quite like the tone on tone of this one. Oh, look, these have moved. Look, they've naturally moved. You know, I had them splayed out, but they've kind of moved. They've done their own thing. Okay, that's fine. But I do like the Indian vibe of this one. Very Indian, isn't it? Okay. I'm going to share it now, Nidia. Uh, Nidia, yeah, I'll put it on. Are you on Artful Stamping Space? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, new meeting. Start meeting. Okay, participants. Oh, my hair's a mess as well. I've just seen myself. Right, back to YouTube. Do I have a Facebook group? I do. It's called Artful Stampin' Space Donna. Yeah, if you join it now, I'll let you in. And it's where... Um, it's where... I am quite strict. It's where people share anything made that's been inspired by what they've seen me show on my channel or my blog or whatever so it's artful stamping space so if they've seen me do a technique or they've seen me do i don't know something like that whatever really one sheet wonders is the main thing that gets just shared on there but, um oh thank you linda yeah uh no password for zoom i'm just letting you in i'll just block people if they're silly <laughs> i'll just chuck them out um let me go to artful stamping space put it on there zoom anyone right paste obviously if it's past saturday the zoom won't be Hello, I can hear people. Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye on YouTube. Lovely to see you guys. And I'll, um, I'll see you all again soon. Lovely. Really nice to have your company. So take care. Bye.